I'm Julia Stumpf, one of the librarians at the Ruth Lilly Medical Library. This is the first video in a series of evidence-based medicine topics about risk. This video introduces the concept of risk. The learning objectives of this video are as follows. Define risk in the context of medical studies, apply the concept of risk to real-life scenarios, and explain how risk helps clinicians to interpret the results of medical studies. In evidence-based medicine, we talk a lot about risk. But what does risk mean? What is the definition of risk in medical studies? Take a moment to think of what words might come to mind when you hear risk. Chances are you thought of things like harm, danger, peril, or threat. However, this is not what we mean when we talk about risk in this context. So what is risk? Actually, in medical studies, risk just means the chance of an event. You may also hear people refer to likelihood or probability when they talk about risk. Although statistically speaking, these are different concepts, they may all be used under the umbrella of discussions about risk. Risk can be the chance for a good event, and risk can be the chance for a bad event to happen. It depends on the question being asked. You could ask, what is the risk for remission if a cancer patient is given experimental drug A versus standard drug B? You could also ask, what is the risk of a stroke in smokers versus non-smokers? Both would be examples of applying the concept of risk to clinical questions. Among these probabilities, which one illustrates the highest risk? If your choice was 1 in 10, you're correct. If 1 in 10 people win the lottery, for every 10 people that play the lottery, one person will win. If 1 in 1,000 people win the lottery, for every 1,000 people that play the lottery, one person will win. I would much rather play the lottery where there is 1 in 10 chance of winning. That is a much higher risk of winning. It is fairly straightforward to determine higher risk when comparing 10, 100, and 1,000. However, what about 3 in 10 compared with 7 in 35? Which is the higher risk? You are correct if you chose 3 in 10. However, figuring this out was a bit more difficult. This is why risk is often presented in percentages. Because the denominator is the same, 100, the percentages can easily be compared. The formula for risk as a percentage is the number of times an event happens divided by the number of possible times an event could happen, times 100. Let's put it all together. Let's say you enrolled 1,000 smokers in a study of stroke risk in people who smoke. and 700 of them had a stroke during the study. In this case, the risk of the event of interest, stroke, would be 700 divided by 1,000, which equals 0.7. Multiply that by 100, and that equals 70, or 70% 70 risk. Make sense? We will get more into the different ways that risk is expressed in medical literature in later videos. Thank you for watching this short video on risk. Questions? Feel free to contact us at the Ruth Lilly Medical Library. Be sure to check out our other videos and tutorials available through the library website.